Hi, I'm Peter Jones, Chartered Surveyor, Author and Property Investor, and this is the Progressive Property Podcast. And today I'm delighted to be joined on the interview sofa <laughs> by my good friend, a man who I first met at ESR, Expert Speaker Revolution, oh, probably what, six months, nine months ago, I can't remember yeah. exactly when. A man who I thought we must get him onto the podcast because he'd have so much to share with us, Paul Beck. Paul, Hi. brilliant to see you. Thanks for how, having how me, how I you appreciate doing? it. Yeah, really, really good, I appreciate being here. It's great to have you here. Now, Paul, one of the reasons why I think I found you particularly interesting when I first met you is because you're a TV star, aren't you? No. Well, I know you no, get embarrassed. When, no. I know you get embarrassed when we say that. But you're on TV. Yeah, I, I am on TV, but I'm certainly not a star. Okay. But uh, I, I'm on shopping television, so yeah. let's get that out there right away, so that people aren't looking on BBC and ITV. Yeah. And I'll tell you what the reason I go no, no, no is because often you know people say, what do you do for a living? And when I first began in television, but 13 years ago, yeah, you say I'm in TV, and you you, know, you kind of big yourself up, and you're proud of yourself, and you say you're a TV presenter. And then the next question is, oh, who do you work for? So then you say the name of the channel and people are like, I don't know, they're expecting ITV, they're expecting BBC. And I, I remember even being out for dinner, because you get recognised quite a lot, because you are, I'm on TV four or five days every week for the last 13 years. Yeah. So people recognise you and you often get stared at. People are looking at you and they're like, where do I know that guy from? And so you know that you've been recognised because they're staring and they're staring and they're trying to work out how they know you. And in fact, I was in a restaurant not too long ago when somebody came out and said, are you on the television? And I said, yes. And they I said, what, what do you do? And I said, you tell me. And they said the news, they said children's television. They, they thought of everything you can imagine, yeah. but not shopping TV. So that, that's why I say, no, I'm, not, I'm no star. There we are. But obviously we met at ESR, Expert Speaker Revolution, yeah. and you're now part of the Unlimited Success Stroke Progressive Community, yes. which is fantastic. We're going to talk about your involvement about that in a moment. But just going back to recognising you, of course, it's not just being on TV, but you do voiceovers as well. Yeah, I've done a lot of voiceovers. In fact, that, that business has grown and grown and grown over, over the last few years. And last year and the year before, I did over a thousand voiceovers each year. So now I've got my own sound recording, recording studio. So we sit in there and pop in. And uh, a lot of it, I've done it through the internet because you can get agents that are online and so you can pick up work from the USA and you never even met these people. So you just do a quick audition, you buzz it across, they buzz you back saying, yep, yeah, you got the gig. And uh, the, the difficult part is that people generally want it within a few hours. They don't want to wait two or three or four days. So you need to be at home sometimes at two, three in the morning, into the studio, do the recording, buzz it across, back to bed. Uh, it's fascinating because <laughs> you've done over a thousand last yeah. year. Yeah. What sort of stuff are you actually doing voiceovers for? Um, it can be adverts on TV. It can be a lot of adverts on the radio, lots yeah. of radio. Yeah. Um, I've been doing, one I picked up in the last year was um, Vivacity sports centres. So sometimes people are saying, oh, I just heard, I was in the blooming pool yeah. here in Peterborough and I blooming heard your voice. And right. you're doing all the announcements for them. So they buzz you maybe 40 or 50 at a time yeah. and you're doing all the adverts and activities that are coming up. So it's all sorts. And um, I did a big series of um, web, it was a, a, something that went viral, um, a cleaning product and that went onto the internet. So I did the 12 days of Christmas for them. Right, now that was, that was what I was curious about. So uh -huh. social media, yep. that's kind of stuff. And I, I imagine for our listeners, we should all be thinking about our brands and getting ourselves out there. Yeah, Doesn't necessarily follow it has to be you. You could put your own ads together and then somebody like Paul Beck yeah. can do the voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> and I imagine that must be a, a massively growing. Social media is getting bigger and bigger, presumably web ads are getting bigger and bigger. And it's probably something we should all be thinking about I, I as think part of our branding. The key to my success on that is that I sometimes voiceover artists, you just want the big money. You know, a mm. bit like being a movie star, you want to get the big, the big movies. Yeah. But if you take what, some of the smaller movies, some of the um, I don't know, one million, half a million budget movies, then you could have a real success on your hands, and that gets you lots of not notice. And really, what I do, I was quite happy to do adverts for twenty-five pounds. Mm. And yeah, you know, some of my friends would be like, "Are you crazy? Why do you even bother for twenty-five quid?" Mm. But you get so many of those. I mean, mm. imagine a thousand at twenty-five pounds. Yes, that's pretty good money. Yeah. So you know, I take everything that comes along, whether it's a thousand pounds or twenty-five pounds. Yeah, and presumably a twenty-five pound one only takes about a minute to do. Oh, so seconds, yeah. seconds. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, we'll come back to that. Now, this is the Progressive Property Podcast. Yeah. And so some of our listeners might be wondering why, albeit the fact that you're a very interesting person, why you <laughs> sat on the interview settee 
waiting for me to talk to you. But we'll come back to your property side. The thing which I think is relevant for everybody, though, is that you're very interested in mindset. Yeah, yeah, that's this is something my which, passion. Well, I'm passionate about it as well, because one of the things which I've realised, particularly since coming to Progressive four or five years ago, is any success, whether it be in property or any type of business, or just in life generally, it all starts with that little mystical four and a half inches, five inches between your ears up here. And so I am unashamedly delighted to have you here because we need to talk about mindset. So whether it's directly about property or not, we need to know this stuff. So thank you for being here, Paul. My pleasure. So you've got a very interesting past, and I guess this is where <laughs> your, uh -oh. your <laughs> in, well, we might as well you know, dive deep into this. Alrighty. And I guess this is where the, your interest in mindset probably came from. But as a young man, you were very, very successful, weren't you? Yeah. You're the youngest cruise director, director in age the world. 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't even know what that means. What was a cruise director? Well, originally as a kid, I think I was just trying to escape from my own lifestyle because I'm from a very poor family, you know, working class family. And I'm, you know, I'm proud of that. I had great parents and work your way through it. But I had aspirations to do far better in my own life. So I thought one of the easiest ways to do that might be acting. So at a young age, I was on stage and I was working in London. And then when I got to about 16, 17, I wanted to go further afield and try and take that even further. And uh, I kind of struggled. So luckily for me, my sister, who had trained as a dancer, went to work on cruise ships as a dancer. Well, I'd never even thought about working on a cruise ship. Mm. But lucky enough, she then got me a free cruise. So I got to go out there as a you know, family, mm. got a free cruise, and it changed my world. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it, just, it opened up something my brain didn't know before. It suddenly mm. saw it and thought, this is possible, I could do this. So I came back to the UK, and everyone's like, how are you going to get on a cruise ship? And I said, I don't care, I don't care if it's a banana boat, I'm going to get on a ship, and then I'm going to get myself to the Caribbean, and I'm going to work my way up and, and get onto a cruise ship. So I actually got a job as a mime. I used to do, in those days, Michael Jackson, very, very popular, and he used yes. to do the moonwalk and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I went and auditioned as a mime artist. And funnily enough, an Italian cruise line wanted someone that could be funny in many different languages. So of course, mime didn't matter what language you spoke. So I got the job, went on the ship, and then within a very short amount of time, I realized the guy making all the money was the cruise director. And so I became friends with him, and he told me how it all worked, and then I, decided I was only 20 years of age when I got on the ships, decided I wanted to become the assistant cruise director and start making some more money. So everyone told me at that time, well, you've got to be 25 to be an assistant, so you've got a long wait. Well, I wasn't in the mood for waiting. I wanted the money. I was eager to get the money. And again, a little bit of luck. I came across a book by Tony Robbins. I'd already started my personal development journey, and I'd read three or four books. But when I read Tony Robbins, Unlimited Success, it changed everything. And it was at that point that I decided that I would make my own life an experiment. And I, why, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I try these things and see if they really worked? So I followed lots of Tony Robbins' ideas and I got it stuck in my head that I could become a cruise director within a year. Uh, not a cruise director, an assistant cruise director within a year because everyone said 25 and I thought I could do it by the time I'm 21. Mm. And within three months, I was the assistant cruise director. And then I thought, well, if I can do that that quickly, I can become the cruise director. And a lot of things came along, but I was prepared. I didn't get ready, I was ready. And the moment that opportunity came along, I became cruise director at 22 years of age. Right. So youngest cruise director in the world. The youngest cruise director in the world. And was it as a deliberate decision as that, to say, right, from now on, my life is an experiment? Um, at the time, I decided that, I, yeah, I would try all of these things out. I didn't realise I was experimenting at the time, but I knew that I was going to commit to these ideas. And the minute, it's like anything. If you see some success and you realise this stuff works, mm. then you build on it, you build on it, you build on it. Mm. And it, I don't care if that you're talking about weight loss or if you're talking about changing your career or climbing the ladder. Once you realise this stuff works, mm. it allows you to really commit to it. Yeah, and of course you use the L word as well, luck. Luck, uh, yeah. I'm, and I'm, I'm sure it wasn't luck. You were ready. You were ready to hear what you needed to hear. Yeah, I, I, I say I got myself prepared, and the mm. moment that opportunity came along, mm. and the luck was actually that the cruise director went ill. Mm. And they said, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they said, well, the assistant cruise director should take over. Mm. Well, of course, I guess most assistant cruise directors may not be ready, but I was already planning to become the cruise director. So yeah. when they said, can you do it? Can you take over this? I got the opportunity. Boom, I took it. And, and I, in fact, 
I did so well that they then flew me to Alaska on a totally different cruise to spend six months with another cruise director and then I became a full-time cruise director with them and I climbed the ladder, climbed the ladder, I got the highest scores ever in entertainment and ended up, this is 18 years of uh, mm. travel and, and uh, working on cruise ships, but eventually I got over to the QE2, got the highest scores ever, went on to the Queen Mary 2, which was the biggest ship in the world at yes, the time. Yes. So I became cruise director on the biggest ship in the world at the time, which I guess for me that was the pinnacle of the career. So I decided then I got to move on. So yeah, there's a little bit of luck, but you've got to be ready for those lucky moments. Being prepared is the key to success. Right, and as a consequence of that, you made your first millions. Yeah, by the time I was 25, I already had made my first million. But the problem was, my mindset was all about being successful and getting money in. Mm. I hadn't learned and I hadn't read any books or studied how to use money as a tool to become more successful. So I actually spent it all as well. Wow. The whole lot? The lot. Right. The lot. Didn't buy any houses. My mum, funnily enough, at the time, you know, I was in my 20s, but my yes. mum was saying, put 10% away or buy yourself a house. You know, you have something to, to enjoy when you, when you decide to come home. But I thought, if I can make this much money at this age, well, it's just going to get better and better and better, right? So I figured that I could make another million just as easily and another million just as easily. But I was, my big mistake was I was spending it just as easily. Right. But having said all that, you had this amazing career. You reached the pinnacle. You're on the Queen Mary. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. What happened next, though? Fell in love. Okay. Um, decided to get married and have a family. And I knew from a previous experience that being on ships without your wife is not a great idea. I'd seen lots of uh, other cruise directors, in fact, senior officers that were at sea, captains that were at sea, and their families were at home. And you kind of miss out on all of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess if you want the money, a great advantage of being at sea is that you can be tax free. Mm. So you don't have to pay tax, you have to stay out of the country like nine months a year. Mm. But if you can do that, mm. you know, your income is just all yours. It's amazing. So I realised that I had to go on land if I was going to make a success of this. So that's when I had to really pull everything together that I got, go on land and find a career that I could enjoy because I knew a lot of people had gone back to sea, back to sea, back to sea. And it's ultimately because they couldn't find the happiness that they had whilst they were on the ships. Mm -hmm. So I, that's when I decided, right, I'm going to go into television. But of course, mm. easier said than done. Mm -hmm. So at 40 years of age, um, I came on land and started auditioning for TV roles, but everyone that I was up against had been in TV 20 years. So I, I had no TV experience. So he can take the guy that has no idea, can't even work to account, you know, five, four, three, two, one, doesn't even know, have any television skills, or the guy that's been in TV 20 years. So I was failing dramatically. Right, and what, what do you mean by that? Well, I went for audition after audition after audition and, and got nothing. And slowly, I'm, all the money that I had saved uh, to come ashore, oh, in fact, I, here's a bit of un bad luck that I got. I'd been putting money away in stocks and shares, thought so that was a smart thing to do, but I hadn't studied it. I didn't really know what I was doing. So I, I thought the smart thing to do was just give your money to a broker, he'll take care of it. And of course he calls out and says, where do you want your money, where do you want the money? And a friend had recommended that I put it into an airport. Many people might know, RAF Manston. So I put my money in there, put my money in there, and I'd seen it growing and growing and growing, thought that was great. And that for me was going to be my nest egg. So when I came on land, I could take that money, I could use that money, spend that money, and um, use that money to ensure that I got into TV. So I gave myself a year to do that. But as soon as I got on land, I made a phone call to the broker and said, I'm um, ready to pull my money out so I can you know, enjoy it and make this next year a big success. And they, they asked for your number, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, no, you've got no money. Said, what do you mean you've got no money? He said, you've got no money. I said, how can I have no money? You've got thousands of pounds invested in this airport. And uh, he said, the airport went bust. <laughs> and then didn't even know. And he said, I've been emailing you, I've been telling you, I, I tried to encourage you to consider your options a few months ago, but you, you weren't interested. Of course, I was at sea and I didn't care. And so I, I lost everything. That was just gone. Literally lost everything. Yeah. Everything. Overnight. So, overnight, yeah. Mm. I, I just came home, called up, thought I'd pull the money out, and that was gone. So that was my first problem. But I figured, well, I'm clever, you know, I'm good at this stuff, and I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to get myself a job in TV. And I give myself a year and I thought if I can't do it within a year then I can go back to the ships. Um, which is, it's kind of a bad idea because if you give yourself that way out, you've always got in the back of your mind that way out. But then I realised if I did do that then I probably wasn't going to get married and wasn't going to start my new life as I wanted it to be and wasn't going to live my dream life. So I was very much committed to it. So I auditioned, 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 kept being told no, 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 no. And then one day I sat at home and thought, I've, I've got to make this work. 
and I saw that now building up in the background because I didn't have the nest egg that I thought sure. I'd have, but yeah. I didn't want to give up my house, didn't want to give up my lifestyle. In fact, the big mistake I made was I didn't even tell my partner, my fiance, the girl I wanted to marry, um, because I, I guess I felt like maybe I'm a failure, uh, maybe she would not love me the way she had in the past. So there was lots of issues going on there. So I kept my mouth shut and just kept playing the game. So before I knew it, 10 grand on credit cards, 20 grand on credit cards, 30 grand on credit cards, 40 grand on credit cards. And as you start to see that sort of debt piling up, especially when you're used to having plenty of cash. Sure. Yes. I, I remember having sleepless nights, lying in bed, you know, just looking at the moon thinking, well, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna, how am I gonna get out of this one? I've really you know, gone crazy now, I've gone too far. I've pushed my luck beyond belief. But I still held on to the belief that I could do this. And that was key, really, to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And then one day, I picked up my remote, remote control and thought, there's all these free view channels. There's all this television that's out there now. I must be able to get something. So I flicked through the channels, and I came across Shopping Telly. And I was like, come on, this, this is easy. Anyone can do this. And some of the channels are more professional than others. And there was one particular channel at the time where they were all jokers, having a great time. Uh, the prices were falling and it was really quite animated and I see myself as an animated person. I thought, that looks like fun. I can do that. So then I changed my master plan and I practiced and practiced and practiced at home in the bedroom, put a camera up, just rehearsed in front of that camera day in and day out, learned a lot about pans, frying pans and saucepans and about Egyptian cotton towels. And I did an audition piece and sent it in. And lo and behold, they said, yeah, come on in, let's, let's meet you. So I went for the audition and I thought I nailed it. But the, the guy, uh, the head of television at the time was like, well, we'll let you know within the next two weeks. And this was absolutely true story. Uh, because I was coming towards the end of that year now, I had already uh, put my feelers out for cruise lines. So Royal Caribbean were bringing out the new biggest ship in the world and they'd already invited me to Miami. So I, I told the guy, the head of TV, well, if you don't give me the job, I'm gonna have to fly to Miami and you know, I, I might be going back to the cruise ships. And he's like, fine, go. So oh, right. I, your bluff. yeah, so I had to fly to Miami and it was a six hour audition. And um, then they said to me, well, we'll let you know in a, in a, in a couple of days time because there's six people that we're looking at for the role. So anyway, they paid for me to fly out there and paid for me to stay in a hotel overnight. So they took me out for dinner that night and we're chatting away, chatting away. And they said to me, uh, you know, when you start, blah, blah. And I said, you keep talking about when I start, but you told me you're not going to tell me if I got the job for a few days yet. And then the guy said, believe me, you had us within the first hour. You've got the job, when can you start? So then I had the bullshit because I didn't have the job on TV, but that's what I really wanted. So yeah. I said to the guy, well, I'm finishing off a TV show in the UK. I need at least six more weeks to get that finished and then I can start. So that, that's great, fine. So I finished off, I went the next day. And then about two weeks later, I got the call from the TV channel, you got the job. So although it was a lot less money than the cruise ship, I'm talking a lot less money, I figured that's my way into television and that's the nucleus for what I could grow and what, what could become and I could get married and blah, 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 and change my life. So I took it. And it's a big risk at the time, but uh, it's certainly paid off. It's, yeah. and, and funnily enough, it turned out at the time, although I thought it was like the worst TV there is on television, it's quite a unique skill. You do three and a half hours of live TV on your own, non-stop, which is one of the hardest gigs that there possibly is. Um, it's not recorded, you don't get to say cut, start again, mm. uh, you don't have somebody else that you can banter off, you're on your own, you're out there for three and a half hours, generally did about 21 products. And so what, what was lucky, again I'm using the word luck, I realised that some of my co-presenters were talking a lot and talking about what they did at the weekend, and I know it's nice to chat about yourself and you share a lot of your personal stories with the audience, but I thought that they weren't focused on the product mm. and talking about why the product was good for you and how it could change your life. And so really that was what I thought I brought to shopping television in, in, or at least that channel. And so I got success, 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 and become one of the leading presenters. Started working nights and that's where all the money is to be made. And then eventually by 2010, I became head of channel. Right, so it's quite a meteoric rise. It could all yeah. have been very, very different <laughs> yeah. if you'd ended up <laughs> on the cruise ship. Yeah. But it's interesting because you made that decision where you could have gone for a lot more money, but your overall life plan your bigger goal, your bigger dream, 
actually took you to a lesser thing, yeah. which turned out to be the bigger thing, yeah, I guess. Definitely. I guess. Yeah, 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 and I still do it today. Yeah. And actually the reason I still do it today is because I love it. I'm freelance now, so I don't have to work anything like I used to. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I really do genuinely enjoy it. So there's something about sales, you get a buzz from it. Yeah. And so you get to use your skills as a TV presenter. Yeah. Um, and now I do actually get an expert guest that you can chat with. But it's all about crafting the cell, and I really do enjoy that crafting. Yeah. Um, I enjoy the fact that you get to have some fun. You, well, I learned a, a great deal when I decided to go to ESI is to sharpen my skills for a new avenue that I've moved into, which is actually teaching the mindset skills myself. Because they've worked for me time mm. and time again. In 2010, when I was at the pin pinnacle of my TV career, and I had a channel, I'm thinking, this stuff really works and I want to share it with other people. So I began a blog in 2010. Well, I was going to ask you about the mindset thing. Let's yeah. ju jump in a little bit here. Yeah. Because obviously, clearly, from a very young age, you've been very much in control, if that's the right word, I, I, in terms I of your mind and mindset and what you wanted and very clear in your goals and what you want to achieve. So it's obviously been a big thing in your life. I, I'm going to jump in and just say, I, what, I, let's say you were right, mm. because I knew at a very young age that I didn't want, want what my parents had. Okay. So that was a big force in my mind, and yes. I didn't want that. And I guess you used to watch TV and see people having big lives, and you know, mm. you watch, not our soap operas, but things like when I was a kid, you used to see Dallas on TV, yeah. and you see these guys living in big cars, big houses, and I'm like, I want a piece of that pie. So I knew that I had to get out of my little life, and I guess going to London at 14, gave me the opportunity to see a bigger world as well. And so constantly I'm thinking, I want more. And then when I went to the cruise ships, and again, you see another way of life, I'm like, I want a piece of that pie. So it's actually travel, getting away from home and seeing that there is more to life than what your parents have, yeah. has been a big driving force for me. And so it, I guess that was the decision to make sure I wasn't what my mum and dad were. It's, you know, and again, I don't want that to come across as being horrible, but I just knew I wanted more out of life. Yeah, that's interesting. So the driving force, I've been mean, equating that back to maybe what Tony Robbins would say, your big why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, how he, important is big, that big for The big thing for Tony Robbins is people um, tend to, it's the, the fear factor. So if they hate something, if they don't like it, if they're afraid that they're going to get that, mm. they'll work hard to move away from it. And that's yeah. exactly what I did, I think. I had the fear that I would have the life my mum and dad had. You know, and, and I'll be honest with you, they weren't happily married, they were always arguing, you'd see plates flying. For me, I didn't think it was very unusual. I think, in, in my mind at the time, that was how all parents were, and that's how all lives were. And I think, when I look back now, I think a lot of people did go through that in, in the 70s, uh, and life's changed a great deal. Uh, but I just knew that I didn't want a relationship or a life like my parents. Yeah. It just wasn't for me. And so having the fear of being like that is what propelled me forward to go find something else. Right. So you ended up in a lot of debt. Yeah. A lot of debt. Yeah. But then you managed to get yourself into TV. Yeah. Where you excelled because you were, as you say, you were looking at it differently to your co-presenters. You were actually, I guess, selling the benefit. Yeah. As opposed to just chatting merrily, chirping yeah, on TV. Yeah. Actually got down to the nitty gritty of what marketing and sales really is. That propelled you on. But around about 2010, you started your blog. Yeah. And you started helping others with mindset. Yeah, it's kind of like that. What, ha what happened was um, in 2010, because I, I guess what's always happened to me is you, you get to where you think you want to be. And then you realise you kind of you plateau there, and you want more. You want something. So in my case, rather than just going for more and building on what I've got, I guess I've always just tried something different and tried to try a new career and and do something else that I thought would be fun and interesting and keep my life really buoyant. And I, I kind of I like to think that having that attitude, having the ability to do something fresh and new, is is what kept my mind a little bit lighter and I don't get dragged down by life and so I, I kind of feel like I'm a bit of a Peter Pan really mm. because of that. And so in 2010 I guess I was plateauing again, I'd really achieved what I wanted to, I'd paid off all that debt, uh, we'd sold our house, or my house in Kent, we'd moved to London and there's a nice story, when we first moved to London because of all the debt, I just moved into a one bedroom flat, a tiny little one bedroom flat but it, it, London was a lot more expensive than Kent. So it's, I think a big part of this, and I'll share this in my mindset story in a moment, but a big part of it is doing whatever it takes mm. to get where you want to go. Yeah. And so, hey, having gone from my 
a detached house in Kent to a one bedroom flat in some of the worst parts of London, uh, I think a lot of people would be like, well, I wouldn't do that. But how, how bad do you want success? Mm. How bad do you mm. want to get where you're going? Yeah. And at the end of the day, hey, who cares? So, um, and in fact, before that, when I first went to London, I was in a house share. I just had a room in a house full of students and um, people from Poland and you, you just get on with it, you know, and it was fun actually. It was kind of like being a student again. It was mm. really quite fun. So you just mm. get through it. Mm. And then to the one bedroom flat and then sold that and bought a, a three bedroom house and then sold that and bought another house. And so property was already then started to become in my blood because I saw the amount of money I could make mm. by buying and selling properties. Mm. Nothing like progressive mm. property does, mm. not on their level, mm. but I was already seeing mm. additional mm. income. So yeah. that's why property started to get into my blood already at that age. So at 2010, I started to realize that all these things I've been learning over the past 30 years really did work. And so I wanted to start to share that. And in fact, a, a movie came along, or at least came under my radar, called The Secret. Yeah. Now, I don't want anyone to suddenly go, oh, blimey, because I'm not a big fan of it, to be mm. honest with you. Mm. And, and I'll tell you why. The, the Secret is brilliant in the fact that it does draw a, a, maybe a, a new audience into positive thinking. It draws a new audience into mindset. It draws a new audience into uh, personal development and self-help. So uh, I think for that reason it was really, really good. And the thing I personally loved about it was that it, it showed you that all of these ideas and this mindset and these success principles go on not just for decades, but for centuries. And that these, you know, you get statements mm. from um, Marcus Aurelius, uh, you get statements from uh, Socrates. Yes. And, and you realize, wow, this stuff's been around for years, but people just don't understand it. So what I didn't like about it was that they said, ask, believe and receive. And I think people thought you could just ask for a million quid. Yeah. If you believe you're going to get a million quid, you'll have a million quid. And of course that doesn't work. So lots of people say it's bullshit. And to that degree, I would argue it is complete and utter bullshit. But when I'd watched that movie, I thought, you know what? I, I want to see if this stuff is baloney rather than say bullshit. I wanted to see if it's baloney or not. So I started a, a blog called Baloney. And I Literally, thought, is that what it's called? Yeah, I called yeah. it baloney. And yeah. in fact, I spelt it in, in a really silly way. Uh, B-A-O-L-O-A-N-I, because it was baloney, a law of attraction network identifier. And the thing what I wanted to help people do was if they were coming, gravitating towards all of this stuff, I wanted to be able to sp put a whole network out there of books that they could go and find easily. Uh, because I've been doing it for 30 years and reading about it for 30 years, I knew there would be books from 15, 20, 30 years ago that they wouldn't know. They, all they knew was the secret or the authors that were on the secret. So I wanted to get a lot more out there. So it was a network identifier, that was my idea. And so I, I decided to take Jack Canfield's book, The Success Principles, yep. because basically because there's about 60 principles in there, 64 I think it is. And I figured that I could do one of those a week and that would be a good starting point. And so that would be 64 weeks worth of content. And so that'd be my first year out of the way, right? But then when I started to read the book again, and I'd had it in 2005, I picked up Jack Canfield's book in 2005. And this is really important. This is really important. I'd picked up The Success Principles by Jack Canfield in 2005, read it, loved it, and perhaps some of that came through and helped me climb my way up in television and become head of channel. But when I picked it up in 2010, I couldn't remember any of it. Yeah. And I think this is what many people do. You get a book, you read it, you get all hyped, you put it on the shelf and you forget about it. In fact, a lot of people now say shelf help. Mm, because you, know, you, right. you buy the book, you put it on the shelf, and you never yeah. read it again. But because I went back to it in 2010, and this is the crucial difference, because I decided to do a blog, and I knew that I'd be, you know, doing only my little YouTube channel, that's all it was, uh, but because I knew I'd be sharing my, my thoughts and what happened to me during a week on, let's call it television, on uh, the YouTube channel, I had to commit to it. And it's that committing to each of those principles that started to change my life dramatically. Now in, in the book, in the very first paragraph, when the, or the first chapter, I should say, the four words, something of that nature, Jack Kenfield says, if you follow these principles, you will have the opportunity to double your income and double your time off within two years. Uh -huh. And I well, thought, that would be a there's my goal. Yeah. So if I'm gonna find out if this is baloney or not, I will set myself the goal, excuse me, the goal, of doubling my income and doubling my time off in two years. So I realized then I was gonna make this a two year um, uh, blog and that in two years time I would have a conclusive end to it and it wouldn't just be something that dragged on and on and on. In two years I'd be able to tell you if I succeeded or not. Wow. So we got started.
Well, that's and the ultimate in accountability, isn't it, for oh putting it out to the public? Well, and accountability like, is the very first principle that Jack Canfield teaches right. you. Right. And in fact, I, I know all these inside out now because I've gone on since, I don't want to jump ahead, but I've gone on since to spend a year with Jack Canfield training now. Uh -huh. I, he's now my mentor. I'm now a qualified Jack Canfield trainer, and that's why I've now started my own uh, mindset company. And just to be clear, for anybody who's wondering, Jack Canfield, isn't he the guy with the chicken soup Chicken thing? soup for the soul oh, yep. yeah. Absolutely. So he is a multi-millionaire, probably yeah. a billionaire at this yeah. point. Yeah. But Success Principles is really his big effort in self-help. Um, but and, and that might be unfair because all of the Chicken Soup for the Soul books are really stories of people of how they've had a difficult life and how they've been able to turn it around. Mm. But he decided to focus on different areas. So you can find Chicken Soup for the Actor Soul, Chicken Soup for the Nursing Soul, Chicken Soup for the Parent Soul. Mm. And so he's actually got stories that mm. specifically identify mm. the difficulties that people mm. might go in those specific areas. So mm. ultimately over 100 self-help books. Right. So you started applying the principles. Yeah. You gave yourself two years. Yeah. Here's that experiment coming in again. Exactly. See what happens exactly. over two years. Yeah. So what happened? Well, the first, the first goal, the first thing that he teaches you is that you must take 100% responsibility for your own life. Okay. And I think when you first read that, uh, two things can happen. One, you can really wriggle with it and go, oh, yeah, that's that's not true. That's not this bullshit. I don't really like that because a lot of things happen to you in life that you think aren't fair, aren't your fault. You know. It could somebody drives a car into you, something of that nature, and it changes your life dramatically. And so, yes, I would agree with that. However, the principle is really based around this little formula by a gentleman called Dr. Resnick from Los Angeles, who, and you might want to write this down, if, if you're watching, write this down. This is a great takeaway. Hmm. E plus R equals O, okay? E plus R equals O. And that's events plus your responses equal your outcome. So right. just talked about someone driving into your car, you know. So a couple of things can happen. You, you might get out of the car and start screaming and shouting at the person that drove into you, and a big burly guy gets out and beats the shit out of you. Uh, or you, you could get out of the car and you get really angry and you start screaming and shouting, you go over to the car, you're bashing on the window, and you realise the person in that car's even more damaged than you are. And so you, you just change your whole attitude in seconds. But ultimately, it doesn't matter what happens to you in life, the way you respond to it... Sure is what determines your outcome. And I've, I guess I've got perfect examples of that already. When I found out that I, I'd lost my nest egg, when I'd lost all my stocks and shares, yeah. I could have just folded and gone back to the ships. And I've yeah. got no money, I'm going back. But I didn't, and that changed my outcome. Um, when I decided I couldn't get a job in TV because everyone else had 20 years experience and I didn't have any, I could have folded and said, well, clearly TV's not gonna work, so I better go and do something else. But I didn't. I, my, my my response to that was, well, what's the worst telly there is? What can I find that I can get into the business and climb? And so that changed that outcome. And so really, there are, I've got so many examples of that. But ultimately, I, that's the very first thing I learned. And so I really embraced that. And I started to take my life in a different way. And I followed principle after principle after principle. And I did blog it, and it's still available online right now. Uh, B-A-O. L-O-A-N-I, Baloani, something like yeah. that, it is baloney. But I'm sure I, you find it. And coming back to that point, I mean, what strikes me is that is the only thing we can do is watch our response. It's the only bit of that formula we've got control over. Exactly. That's we've got no control right. over the event. No. But we can control the outcome if we control our response. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really uh, powerful. ultimately, it's a little bit like, let's say you're steering a ship and you know that you, you're going from Southampton and you want to get to New York. But if the wind is blowing in the wrong direction and you're going way off course, then you can obviously change, the pull the rudder or you tack and you go in a different direction. Yeah. And so you ultimately, yeah, it might, you might be changing direction constantly, but you know where your end goal is and you do whatever it takes to get there. So yes, the outcome uh, is really where you want to get to and your navigation is your responses. Yeah. So from a property perspective, there'll be listeners listening to this pr Progressive Property Podcast obviously have property outcomes. Is that actually the case? Is it a property outcome or is it a financial outcome? I suppose we could have a think about well, that. Well, I, I think it would depend on what your goals are. And that's mm. a really important thing too, you know, clarity of what you want in life. I think I could have been far more successful in my own life if I'd actually known what it is that I wanted. And I guess the experiment is partly that's been me trying to find out what I want in life, you know, what makes me happy. Um, and I've been lucky because all the things I've been doing made me happy, but never completely and utterly fulfilled me. So I move on and I move on and I move yeah. on. Um, so if you are into property, I think it is important to know what you want. Do you, are you trying to get a bank of 10 houses? Mm. Or, or is it the amount of money you'll get 
that means you won't have to go to work again. Mm. So you really need to clarify mm. that. Very so if different you know, thing, isn't it? Yeah, if you know exactly what you want, then you can work towards that goal. And you might end up finding, hey, I only need five houses because mm. I, I've got that money now and I don't have to work. And then maybe you'll change your goals. You can always change your goals. I think sometimes people get nervous about goal setting because they feel that they're trapped. Mm. Your goal, you mm. change it anytime mm. you like. Mm. And goal setting, that's something which you're particularly interested in Absolutely. and have used, obviously, to great effect in your life. So talk us through a little bit on goal setting, Paul. Yeah, um, what, what, what really happened was I, I studied studying with Jack and that all became a big part of my life. And then I, start, I wanted to share my story and share the success and help other people mm. become a success. Uh, pay forward is, is a big term these days, paying mm. it forward. So I wanted to start paying it forward. And in 2010, again, when I started that blog, ultimately I started to look for what's the number one thing that I could do in my life or that I could share with other people that would help them take control of their lives and be in charge of their lives. And it really, it all, it all came down to, to one word, engage, because I looked at all sorts of different things, you know. Is it just goal setting? Of course it's not. Is it clarity of what you want? No, of course it's not. And ultimately what you need to do is engage with success. So if you engage with it, then you've got an opportunity to, uh, I'll give a really basic example. Um, if you want to win a million quid, you, or you want to win the lottery, okay, you want to win the lottery, that's your goal, you want to win the lottery. If you don't engage with the participation of buying a ticket, you've got no chance to win the lottery, right? So mm. you, you're not going to do it. So you've got to do that. If your goal is to win the lottery, I think you need to, <laughs> to look at a lot of your options there because obviously that, that's, the chances of doing that are very, very slim. Yeah. But you need to work out. So I would say your argument there is going to be that your goal is actually to make a million quid. So yeah, hey, feel free to go buy a lottery ticket. That can be on your radar. But at the same time, what skills have you got? What can you do? Um, if you don't want to give up your job, maybe you can look at something which could be a business on the side. And I would argue Amazon is a great way to mm. do that. I've, I've embraced the Amazon mm. story myself. Um, or maybe you want to start becoming a speaker so that you can speak and do that in addition to your job. But you need to work out what your ultimate goal is and I would say then, once you've started planning those goals, you need to work out steps towards those goals. Uh, a vision board, some people think that's a little ethereal, it's a little bit fluffy. I think a vision board is... Tell, a, tell us what a vision board is and how, how do you put one together? Well, it, once you know what your goals are, and it, you know, I encourage you to take a day off or a weekend away yeah. and start writing down those goals. And really, don't just think about your family and what they want and what you want for them. Yes, include that. Uh, in fact, there were seven areas of your life that I would encourage you, I'll go through those in a moment, seven areas of your life that I would encourage you to consider when you're setting up your goals. Because if it's just money, 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 mm. then the chances are that many actors or pop stars have plenty of money, mm. but their life is in disarray. You know? Yeah, totally. They, they, or they end up taking their own lives because yes. they're so unhappy. So Sadly, we know that common, money isn't, isn't, isn't the only success. So those seven areas to have a well-balanced life are really, really important. So work out goals for all of those areas. And then you want to work out steps of how you could start to do it. Now, I would argue you don't necessarily need to know how you're going to get there. Just have a plan. But mm. you don't really need to know how you're going to get there because none of us are going to know all the answers. But if you start moving towards the direction of your goals, serendipitous things can start happening. For example, you might say, I want to get a property, but I've got no money of my own. Mm. Well, you, you go on a progressive property course, you're going to mm. learn about JVs, you know, joint mm. ventures, mm. before you know mm. it, by finding a couple of people that have got the money, mm. you've suddenly got a property or yeah. a piece of the pie. And they'll and, appear. It's and, and they really how often it happens. do appear, yeah. yeah. So vision boards, uh, it's, there's so much to cover, so much okay. to share, yeah. but ultimately once you've got your goals in place, you've got clarity of what it is that you want, yeah. what I recommend that you do is then start putting pictures and photographs and clippings from magazines yeah. or excerpts from books and put them on a board. The bigger the board, the better. So you can cover those seven areas and look at it every day. You yeah. know, a big one for me is I've got a, a um, picture on my laptop so as soon as I open up the laptop I see a picture and I know what I want. I've got a slide presentation so I can always sit down and, and go through my uh, PowerPoint presentation yeah. on all of my goals. What a great and idea. You, you can add audio to it and, and it's almost like a little bit like meditation again some people think that's fluffy but meditation is just a few moments and it can literally be a few moments I, I recommend seven minutes personally but if you take those few minutes out in the morning or in the evening and it gives you an opportunity just to go through your PowerPoint presentation, just to look at your yeah. photographs, just to look at your vision board, just to close your eyes and start to really feel the success that you've got. Yeah. That can help you move toward it. And the reason I say it's not fluffy is because unfortunately, 
it's not an easy journey. Mm. No, no one's saying this is a piece of cake. You know, I've shown you my own journey. It's been, yeah. it's been highs and lows, yeah. and it's getting through those lows. And having a vision board, something in front of you that you can see so quickly and easily that can remind you of what you really want, yeah. that can really help get you through those tough times. Well, it's not fluffy, is it? I started off this interview by saying that the most important thing is the sort of five inches between your ears. Yeah. And the workings of the human mind are incredibly complex. Yeah. So, so hopefully we won't dismiss that. Very quickly, what are the seven areas then that we should be thinking about? Okay. Uh, I've written those down for you to make sure I always nail them, but number one, I like to do them in a particular order, okay. is career, because most of us have got a job already. Yeah. Uh, and most of us are probably afraid to move away from that job. So your career, that's certainly one thing to consider. I mean, you might want to work your way up the ladder. You might decide you want to change career because you want to be happy in your job. I would always recommend that you can find something that is your passion. Mm. If you enjoy doing something, mm. then it's not really like a job. So that's yes. really going to help you out. And what I w would recommend too is if, if you want out of that job, then find ways, don't necessarily quit your job and suddenly have no income, but start looking at ways of how you can do that. It might be going freelance, that might mm. be a great way to go. Or it might be taking a, another business like Amazon, for example, that can be on the side and you can start to grow that. Or maybe start looking for properties, or maybe you can buy your first property and flip it mm. and sell it whilst you're still doing your mm. job. So there's lots mm. of ways. So really focus on your career and work out if it is a job you want to stay in. Because if you've got the mm. perfect job, stick with it. Then finances, how much money do you really, really want? And I mean really, really want, because it's easy to say, I want a million quid and I'll be sorted. But y you might actually not need a million pounds to find true happiness. Mm. And so you might be able to set your goals a little lower. You might say, hey, I, I know I can make a million quid easily, so stretch yourself, push mm. yourself, get out mm. of the comfort zone, make it 10 million pounds. So mm. you know, really start to dream big. If you suddenly think, well, I could get 10 properties, especially if I start doing joint ventures, especially if I start working with other people. Yeah. Uh, in some of the classes that I've been on here with unlimited success, you meet people that are telling you that in 18 months they've made one and a half million pounds or they've invested in property. I met somebody about three months ago who told me that they've gone from zero to six million in mm. two years. Fantastic, I mean, this amazing. Is this is somebody at uh, Progressive Property. Yeah, yeah. So it is incredible, the stories that are out there. So dream big yes. and think about your finances. Then relationships, because what you don't want to do is end up working, 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 and putting aside the kids, putting aside the family. And you know, again, a lot of people focus so hard on making money that they never get any time. And, and if, in fact, just recently, at one of the classes that somebody was saying that they've got you know, loads of kids and they're afraid that if they work that hard, that they won't have time for the children. So a recommendation I've got there is compartmentalise your time. Mm. So you might say, look, Sunday mornings, we're all off, I don't have to go to work, and that Sunday morning I'm going to spend three hours with the kids. Mm. And go make that a brilliant three hours. So if you've only got a little, yeah, only a little bit of time, but make that really important time. Mm. Mm. So take them to the pool, take them to the park, go, go, go do something amazing, take them to the museum, but go do some special stuff with them. So relationships are important. Then health and fitness. This is one of the things, I, I'm a big fan of this, and, and in fact, I've used um, the mindset stuff again recently to, to lose three stone myself. Mm. And the reason for that, you, you mentioned find the why. My big why was having another child. I've got four kids now. Mm. And uh, Troy came along when I was 50. Mm. And so suddenly, being 50 and having a baby, I was thinking, oh my goodness, when he's only 20, I'm gonna be 70. When he's only 30, I'm gonna be 80. Mm. So I start start to think I really need to take care of myself because ideally now I'd like to be around when I'm 100 so yes. I can definitely see him get married, definitely yeah, see him yes. have a couple of kids and support him in the way that I want to. So now that's one of my personal goals to take care of myself in such a way that I can be around till I'm 100. Yeah. Of course there's no guarantees but that's my goal. Yeah. Uh, and what can I do to move toward that goal? Eat better. I was overweight, I went on the old website for the NHS and they recommended that I get for my height, my age, my body mass, blah blah blah. 10, 10, today I'm 10, 10. Yes. And so I lost that three stone by started exercising. And this doesn't have to be a big deal. You don't, I didn't join a gym, just got a piece of exercise equipment from shopping TV. Um, <laughs> then I also um, started to drink a lot more water and I watched what I ate, became a calorie counter. And now I, I love it, I absolutely yes. love it. And that's all up here. You realize yeah. it, it's just a mindset. You, you get up in the morning, bad habit for me was getting toast. First thing I did was toast, toast, toast. Mm. And stopping bread and potatoes was one of the best things I did. Mm. If you're trying to lose weight, mm. bread and potatoes out of your life can mm. make a huge difference yeah. so quickly. And so now I don't even think about bread and potatoes. You know, but I've been doing, doing this for, I'm gonna say 18 months, because I started thinking about it two years ago. He's mm. Troy's two now. Mm. 
and then about 18 months I really committed to it and I just saw the weight coming off and I, and I love it. So health and fitness is a big one. Then re recreation and personal life. So again, this is talking about the kids maybe, spending time with them, but doing your hobbies too. Mm. There's no point working hard if you don't get to play hard and that's a big mantra for me. Mm. Uh, work hard and play harder. Mm. And I really do love to go out and, and have some fun, you know, whether you go rock climbing with the kids, mm. um, whether you're going on the water, yachting, any, anything, whatever it is, taking a holiday. This year I'm going to take three holidays to so really get some good family time. And then contribution and legacy, that's the big one. So it's all right making all this money and it's great being a success in your own right, but how can you give back to your local community? Mm. Mm. And that, that's something for me that is not new. I started mm. doing that even when I lived in LA for four years back in the 90s and uh, I joined the local sheriff's department. Did and you? That was really, yeah. really good fun. Yes. You know, when I first started, they just got you to do thumb, thumbprints and fingerprints when people came in. So it's like, like being, um, what they call it, a volunteer sheriff, no, a volunteer policeman, I think you have, they, they, they have a job over here now in the UK where right. you, you can help out the police force. Yeah. Uh, and this was the sort, same sort of thing. So every Wednesday I helped them out and it started off fingerprints and thumbprints. And then after a while they said, hey, you're doing a great job. Here's a set of keys, go deliver this down to the southern part of the state. So I started driving the police cars and that was your sheriff's cars. And that was amazing. And one day I got a, uh, the sheriff's high speed pursuit car, which is a five litre Mustang. Mm. And you're going down the highway, you know, bombing it down there and whoa, 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 I'm going too fast. And re well, a real buzz I got was slowing down, and I realised that if I slow down, I went to 60, because it's 70 out there now, but if you, if you go to 60, everyone else is slowing yes. down. And I kinda Power, got, hey? Uh, yeah, I kind of got a buzz out of that. That yeah. was fun. Um, so, yeah, giving, giving to your, your local community is really, really important as well. Yeah. And it could be charity work. You know, it could just be happening. A big thing for me at the moment is I work with, I say work with, it's all free, but work with the local council. And so we provide them some of the websites that they need. We do that free of charge. Um, we, um, f they have a big day called Feast Day, so I get involved in, because my background is really entertainment, so I get involved in the events organisation. And I do that at Christmas as well, with another one called Christmas in Uppingham. So I, I do all that for free. Right, brilliant. Mindset, very important yeah. to you. And you're not just talking about it, you're not just living it, but you also teach it as well. Yeah. And you have your own model. Yes, I do. What's your model, Paul? Well, it, it, it kind of went back to when I was thinking about what is the one thing that I can do or the one particular area that I can do that can change life dramatically. And it really did come down to the word engage. You must engage with success. So that's the name okay. of the company, Engage With Success. And in fact, that is the, the name of the model. So E-N-G-A-G-E, -E, that's an acronym for the six basic steps that you need to take to have success in your life. Now, of course, each one of those has got more steps and you mm. can work towards that. But ultimately, E is evolve. Mm. And I think sometimes people hear that term, they think, well, how do you evolve? It's about involving your mindset. It's about evolving the way you think. And that really is, mm. it's as simple as looking at things in a different way. Mm. Um, it's about taking full responsibility for your own life uh, and the actions that you take, and most importantly, taking responsibility for your reactions or your responses. So back to that E plus R equals O. Mm. So in a nutshell, that's what it's really about. So you start to drive your life by taking that position of power. And, and sometimes people still wriggle with that and say, oh, I don't know if I could change. I, I believe that we are machines of adaption. That's what we do. Yes. We, evolution is a big part of our life. And if you're sitting there thinking, wow, well, I don't believe that we were monkeys and that we've become human beings. Okay, you don't need to do that. But just think of us as an individual where you've come, you know, you, popped out and you learn to speak. You mm. learn all sorts of skills. You may become an accountant, you may become a TV presenter, mm. you, you may become um, a business entrepreneur, but you learn all these skills. Mm. And at some point in your life, you decide to change. And yeah. You might change because of a relationship. But imagine now if you were born in China, just for an example, an extreme example, and your parents couldn't afford you, so at two years old, they had to give you up for adoption, and you came to the UK. Well, you're going to learn English. You're going to become an English-speaking person, and you're going to have the mindset of people that are your parents. Mm. And so, my point is there: we evolve, and we can become anything mm. we want. Mm. And I really do think that that is such a powerful place to be to understand that you can become anything you want. The power of this four and a half, five it's inches. It's all up again, here. It? It's absolutely about believing yeah. in it. Mm. Then N, I call it Nirvana. Yeah but it's all about creating that clarity. It's what is your nirvana? What is your idea of heaven on earth? So if you can start now to plan your dream life and know what it is and then how you can create it. So you might be saying, well, I just want more time off. We'll do it. Oh, by the way, when I did my two year blog, I doubled my time off and tripled, uh, doubled my income 
and tripled my time off. Right. So I did get success. So you didn't in that. double your time off, you tripled your time off. I tripled my time off. And you doubled off, your income. And I doubled my income. So, Just yeah, by yeah, applying was, the principles. By applying all these principles, yeah. Okay. So it really yeah. did work. And it was actually that, once that happened, that I thought, now I've got to teach this stuff because that really proved to me this stuff works. And that's when I got in touch with Jack, spent the time with Jack. Jack's now my mentor. And it's Jack that's, you know, said, get out there and teach it yourself. Mm. But mm. Jack doesn't want you to go out there and share his story, yeah. he wants you to share your story. And sure. so that's why I've taken everything I've learned over the last 30 years and brought it into this Engage with yeah. Success model. Yeah. So creating your nirvana is important. You know, how happy are you gonna be with your family? How happy are you gonna be with your job? Uh, how much money do you wanna have? So that's the second step. And then G is goals, mm -hmm. E-N-G-A-G-E. -E. Uh, and so it's a matter of setting out those goals. And I really recommend that you write those goals down. Mm. Get them on paper or do the vision board. Mm. Because a lot of people, and I see this with people that I'm training or that I'm mentoring, and you know, a month goes by and you say, have you got the goals written down yet? And they're like, well, no, no, because I know that I'm clear yeah. up here, I know what I want. Putting them down in writing. Yeah, massive. I, yeah, I, I can't even tell you what it does, but it's like it goes into your system and it becomes a reality. It almost forces you to move toward it. And that's what having a vision goal and reminding yourself constantly about it helps so much. Having it up here is not enough. I'm not saying it won't help. If you've got clarity in your mind, yes, it's gonna help, but actually moving towards those goals is improved dramatically by seeing it in writing, looking at, I, I carry my goals in my wallet. They're mm. in my wallet and I read them every day. Mm. So that really, really helps. Mm. And then, of course, the next thing is to take action because if you don't take action, it's like, nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna win the lottery and not yeah. buying a ticket. You've got to take action. And that's where your goals then start to become important because you can, well, I'd recommend if, you, if you've got a, let's say you've got five year plan, or a 10-year plan, work it back to five, work it back to two, work it back to one year, and then in that last year, have 12 months of plans so you can really start to work, so you know what in this next week you're gonna be doing. Mm. So you can say, right, today I've got these three things that I've gotta get done. Mm. And if you haven't got them done today, then you gotta get them done tomorrow, but don't keep putting everything off tomorrow. So try to backward engineer everything so you've got clear steps, and try to do something every day. Try to take an action step, if not two, three action steps every day towards your goals. Yeah. And, and that will really help propel you. But of course, the action only becomes possible when you've got your goals in place, which are only really easy to create when you know what your nirvana is, your idea of heaven on earth is all about. And, and of course, none of that will take place unless you've decided to take full, full um, engagement with this and decide that you're in charge of your life. And then the next one is guts. Guts. The next G is guts. And this yeah. is really important to me. And I think this is where many people fail because actually it's quite easy to sit down and daydream about your idea of heaven on earth. Mm. It's quite simple to sit down and make up all these goals, say, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this. And it is a little harder to take action steps, uh, especially the first one, that, that can be terrifying for you. It depends obviously what it is. It might be a simple step, so that's quite easy, but it might be a, a big leap. Mm. So that can be a little harder, but you got to have guts so that when things look like, when you're facing adversity, when things look like, oh my goodness, this is never going to work, this can't go right, to continue. Mm. Now, of course, that doesn't mean continue blindly. Mm. You reassess constantly, reassess what you're doing. You might need to change direction to get where you're trying to go and just ultimately remember that end goal. But sometimes, examples that I've already used in, in today's mm. chat, mm. is the fact, you know, when, when you suddenly find you've got no money, how am I gonna do it? Mm. Well, don't give in, find mm. a way to do it. And so mm. many people do give in. So many people, even though they don't like to admit it, become quitters. So many people have a great idea and they, they might do the first month or two months or three months. And then sometimes what happens is just when you're about to get success, when it's just around the corner, and because it is around the corner, you can't see it in front of you. It's just around the corner. If you could just push through and get to that corner, you would see that success. Yeah. And so that's why you've got to have guts. Guts are so important. And then finally, the last one is education. This is a constant, and I think Rob Moore would be a mm. big advocate of this. Mm. Um, if you constantly educate yourself, you're learning little golden nuggets along the way. Mm. And even though, you know, 30 years of studying other people's ideas and using those and making my own life an experiment, you're always learning. Someone mm. else is always coming up with a different idea. And although I, I really do believe a lot of this is not new. Mm. As I said, one mm. of the things I did love about Secret is it showed it's been going on for hundreds and thousands of years. Yeah, ancient principles. Yeah, they are ancient principles. Yeah. And they are principles. Again, not fluffy, not yes. airy fairy. These are solid principles that exist. But if you don't constantly educate yourself, 
then you're not going to be moving forward and that's when you're probably going to come to that plateau again. So constantly strive to make new contacts, constantly strive to find a new book, constantly strive to come up with your own new strategies. Yeah. We're almost out of time, Paul, so ah. which is a shame. But talking of education, I know that you do teach and mentor yourself. Yeah. And presumably the Engage model. How can listeners get in touch with you? How can they embrace what you're talking about? Yeah, it's easy to go and read more about me on engagewithsuccess.com. Okay. Uh, and you can read quite a bit about uh, how this all works on there. There's a lot of information on it. But we do half day courses which are really useful and will give you all of the principles and you really understand the model and how mm. that works. Mm. And that can be life changing for you if you mm -hmm. start to use it right away. Uh, we do a full day course and obviously with a full day course you get a lot more time together. So people then start to work on their, their ideas of what their success is and they get a lot more clarity mm. on what they would like to achieve in their own lives. And we can start to help them set their goals. And then the big one, um, unfortunately, it's all, uh, unfortunately for others, not for me, uh, it's already sold out for the rest of 2018 but we do a three-day retreat as well. And the three-day retreat is really important for a couple of reasons. Sometimes you can go on a half-day course and you love it and you get away and you go all excited, but that a little bit is like shelf help. Mm. It's like picking up that book, getting all excited, getting motivated, saying, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, mm. and then not doing anything. Mm. So what you need to do is take yourself out of your life for that weekend. So we mm. always do it on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so generally people have only got to take one day off of work. And on those three days, we encourage you to come away on your own. You can bring your partner if you want to, but if you come away on your own, you really get to think about yourself, mm. what you want, where you want to go. Mm. And it give, we give you lots of opportunity. It's in the countryside. We do it on Rutland Water, which is Lovely. one of the mm. most beautiful places in the UK. Mm. And you get lots of time in the, the fresh air and the countryside, and you get the opportunity to think about what you really want. And over those three days, you deep, deep dive to find out much more about yourself. It can get a little bit emotional. Sometimes people start crying because they never thought they had the courage to talk about these things. They really didn't believe that they could go for their goals. Uh, and we try to get you to take action on those three days. You know, we, one of the things we do is we take a 15 minute break and we say, go take that first step right now. And that might be a phone call. Mm. And people come back in and they're just pumped up because yes. they've already got a yes for yes. something that they planned on. So it, it, this, is, this is amazing. Um, so we start that again in, in 2018. But if you go to engagewood.com, everything is available on there. Fantastic. Can we find you on Facebook? Uh, yes, I'm on Facebook. You'll find that Engage With Success uh, on Twitter as well. And uh, we haven't started the YouTube channel yet because we, we had one called, or I said we, uh, What Life Is All About. And that was, that was what came out after Baloney. So Baloney yeah. was the YouTube channel. Then What yeah. Life Is All About became a YouTube channel. And then when we started committing to this, uh, it just took off in a much bigger way. And I really struggled to a certain degree to keep up with it. And so we're fully, fully sold out in August, sold out in September, and then in October I'm back to the United States to go and spend mm. a week with Jack. All right, wonderful. So just to be clear, if anybody wants to get in touch with you on Facebook, they can. How do yeah. you spell your name? Ah, uh, Beck. Uh, well, you just look, B, for, you look for Engage With Success. Okay. That's the easiest That's way the easiest to do way. it. Yeah, and and is there any email success. address if anybody wants to? Yeah, it's okay. info, at, or if you want to send it directly to me, yeah. paul at uh, engagewithsuccess.com. Fantastic. Paul, it's been wonderful having you here. Thank it's you. It's been really inspirational. We could talk for hours. Yeah, and, and maybe we'll I get, get paid to. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> and maybe we'll get you back and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this and go into some of this in a, in a lot more detail. Yeah, there, there's so much fantastic. content. It would be easy to do a whole one on the E, a whole one on the N, a whole one absolutely. on the G. Absolutely, yeah. And it's just so important. That. The key thing is, I did hear once that 50% of doing something is just starting. And yeah. it's the action, isn't it? Yeah. The A. The A comes almost in the middle and it's, everything's built around that. Just That's right. Mad. Uh, I mean, in fact, Brilliant. I'd be happy to uh, give you a PDF of that and you can post it if you want Fantastic. so that everyone can, can enjoy it. Brilliant. We'll contact you through, through your site. Yeah, Facebook, absolutely. It'd be great. Happy. Brilliant. Paul, it's been wonderful. Thank you ever so much. I've been Peter Jones. This has been the Progressive Property Podcast. If you have any ideas for subjects you'd like us to cover, then please get in touch with me through Messenger or through the Progressive Property Facebook group. If it looks like a subject which could benefit everybody, we may do it as a podcast. In the meantime, think about your mindset. All of this stuff is absolutely critical, whether you're doing Amazon, whether you're doing property, whatever you happen to be doing, if you don't run the, all on the right track, which is up here, this little four and a half, five inches up here, it won't happen. So think about your mindset. Go to Paul's site, contact Paul if you want to get a bit more in-depth training on this. And in the meantime, Here's to successful property investing.